Franklin on the side. And a chance for the Cardinals. And the shot is into the corner. And the Cardinals lead one to nothing. Well, Coach, it's good to have you back on Inside the Cardinal Playbook for good the third here. segment. Uh, I know you had a big one uh, yesterday against Truman State. Uh, why don't you talk about that? I know you're satisfied because we got to talk a little bit before we got on air. You're pretty satisfied with the play and the effort that the kids, but why don't you give a quick synopsis of the ball game? Well, our women's team qualified for the GLVC championships, and, and um, we played at Truman State in the first round of the playoffs. We didn't win the game. We lost two to one. Truman State scored late, but it was still good just to see. You know, we've had uh, the, the women's team has played, um, uh, been very competitive, gained really good results, winning a lot of games, and and uh, we've played really well the past three weeks. We've been getting healthier uh, every week, and actually our playoff game at Truman was the healthiest we've been since the second game of the season. Um, we actually had an injury late in that game, but uh, but still. Uh, the effort was very good. Attitude was good. It was unfortunate that we lost. Truman State's a good team, but it was a game we could have won, and it was really, it really was a good college playoff game. Both teams had a lot of energy. The fans on both sides got to cheer <laughs> so uh, during the game, and, and uh, uh, it feels bad having the season over, uh, but the ladies did give a good effort throughout the season. How many seniors you got on that squad? We have nine seniors, I want to say, on the team, so a lot. So you, you, uh, how many young kids did you play this year? Yeah, we, we, play we, quite we a started bit five seniors, so everyone got to play some, uh, but we had five seniors that started and played a lot, and um, we're going to miss them for sure. But we've got a lot of very good young ones as well. Well, let's talk a little bit about recruiting. That kind of be a segue in. You know, uh, season is over for both the men oh, yeah. and the women. Yeah. So talk about where you're going to go for both programs. This kind of opens up for both programs, not just the women. Uh, talk a little bit about recruiting soccer in this area and what you go through. Uh, soccer recruiting for men and women is incredibly intense. People probably be surprised how intense it is. It's some, I really do love doing it. Uh, we have many players committed for next year already on the men's and women's team. I don't think I'm supposed allowed to say no. I know you're not. Their names, but, you, but, but we have a lot of very good just, players. Just talking generally, I yeah, know we you have we have good players who are committed to, uh, to come here next year, and we're excited about that um, on both the men's and women's teams. But it's one of those things to where it's always you know I had calls today about players, and I'll contact players you bet. today about players. But I do it really is 24/7, 365 days a year. Recruiting is going on. Uh, people think that's crazy, but it really that's the way it works. So. Um, it's fun. It's great giving people opportunities to come to William Jewell College. How do you rate, as far as our area, as far as local kids, the opportunity to come uh, to William Jewell, for example? And I know the first uh, week in February or second week in February is signing, signing date, date mm -hmm. and all that. But, uh, you know, uh, as far as a hotbed for soccer, how do you feel locally uh, we're shaping up compared to a lot of places? I realize it's not like St. Louis where, you know, soccer is well, probably one of the key places. It, it's St. Louis, and we have players committed from those areas uh, and in other areas as well, um, and we have currently players on our team from St. Louis. But really, Kansas City is becoming one of the nation's hotspots for, really? for players. And even people in St. Louis will tell you that Kansas City, within the past 10 years, has been catching up in some regards passing St. Louis, which is a huge deal. It, it is, um, because I'm old school at the high uh, school level, and I've been out six years now. Both, both that is my, interesting. Yeah, both my parents... Uh, or went to high school in St. Louis, and my dad, who graduated high school in 1954, played high school soccer. Mm -hmm. And um, there'll be people in St. Louis that will tell you they played on the national champion grade school team and mm -hmm. stuff like that way back when. Right. And they're serious. They mean it. And uh, uh, so that's what uh, you have a going there. There's a lot of, lot of great uh, tradition, obviously, in St. Louis. And Kansas City now has a lot of great tradition. Obviously, we have um, Major League Soccer here in Kansas City, which St. Louis doesn't have. And we have the NWSL, which is the top women's professional league. We have a team here in Kansas City, which St. Louis doesn't have. So I think because of that, um, Kansas City is getting a lot more exposure at high levels that some of these uh, youth players in the city can get. And we've got a lot of good ones, a lot of good ones on our team roster here at William Jewell College as well. So you kind of feel a tribute to the uh, popularity in the Kansas City area to our local professional teams. And really, yes. I, see it, I see it too. I really see it at the younger levels yep. too, Coach. Am I right there? Yes. And I'm, I'm myself a little bit of a product of it. My dad uh, grew up playing uh, soccer, but 
uh, he was a big baseball guy too. And um, but when I grew up was when the Kansas City Comets indoor team right. was I really. Remember. They came in 1981, yep. and I was 10 years old at the time, and I was already playing soccer. I was in the Children of Pelé mm -hmm. era when Pelé came mm -hmm. to play for the Cosmos, and this huge soccer um, uh, popularity grew in the United States. I was really kind of a part of that, and then it got bolstered when the Comets came in, and then that helped me and a lot of my friends. Really, the sport grew in Kansas City even more. Then when the Wizards came in, now called Sporting KC, it's also helped it grow continuously. It's been great. Yeah, I've been over that stadium. It's quite a culture when they Not play, stadium. too. I mean, you know, awesome. if a young young person that's interested in soccer goes over there, they're going to get excited. Oh, about, yeah. Fantastic. You know. Well, you know... Uh, uh, recruiting is not exact science, uh, and this generally talking again. I know you have all the NCA uh, rules and stuff, but what do you look for in a player? We look. I look for the best soccer student athletes I can get. Uh, the only time where it's position specific is really goalkeeper. Besides that, I look for great student athletes, great people. And um, if someone's a uh, very good player and a great student, I want them here at William Jewell College. I know they're going to they're going to be able to be successful. I know they're going to work hard, have a lot of pride, be coachable, and they're going to have a lot of success here. So people ask, are you trying to look for a certain position? I'm looking for a good soccer player, good student athlete. And um, we think we have one of the best soccer academic programs in the nation at, at any level. Well, there's no question about the academics here, yeah. right? We've won. Um, we've had uh, Scholar All-American, Scholar All-Region players. Our men's and women's team have won the... Uh, National Coaches Association Team Academic Award the last six years. Um, so we have outstanding student athletes who get great GPAs and graduate, and that's what it's all about. That is it, what it's all about. It is making uh, young people better as far as life's lessons are concerned, Coach. You do a great job of that. Congratulations on your season. Thank Good you. luck to you. And that will finish this segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. We'll come back with the final segment with Coach Cruzy and talk a little bit about the game against uh, Kentucky Wesleyan on Saturday.